some expiring air miles, lapsing British Airways gold status, and a general sense of curiosity drew me towards Toledo. Spain, no, not Ohio, that'd be a very different video. But we kicked off this trip with an extended stay in the incomparable Cathay Pacific Lounge at Heathrow's Terminal 3, one of my favorite lounges in the world. Great views, great food, great amenities. A fantastic place to wait for our quick flight to Madrid. From there, it's just 30 minutes on a high-speed train to Toledo's beautiful Moorish Revival Railway Station located just outside the city walls. From the station, it's a 20-minute walk up, up, up into the city itself, which, perched atop a peak next to the Tagus River, is spectacular. As you wander Toledo's narrow, cobbled streets, you'll notice that there is influence from a variety of cultures, epochs, and religions. In fact, it's a truly unique blend that has shaped Toledo's place in history. One of Toledo's nicknames is the City of Three Cultures, and it's reasonably rare, although you can go all over Spain and you can see Christian influence, you can see Muslim influence, and you can see Jewish influence. It's rare to have that in all three cities, and it's one of the few cities in European existence where all three cultures lived simultaneously, and you can see mosques that became churches, again, very common in Spain, and also synagogues and churches right next to each other. And the influence remains, and it remains protected and celebrated. In fact, the entire city was designated as a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1986. And you can see why, not just because of its place in history, it was the Spanish capital for a long time, which is pretty incredible given the size of the city. It's very small, but it was also one of the first places to occupy the vacuum after the collapse of the Holy Roman Empire. And that is actually where we get the expression, Holy Toledo. I absolutely made that up. There's no truth in that whatsoever. That's how fake news starts, people. The food in Toledo, like much of Spain, is exquisite. From the pleasing simplicity of a bocadillo yamon, in this case, with a few slices of local manchego cheese, to the Toledo Taverna specialty, carcamusa, a satisfying meaty stew. But there is one other food that is particularly special to Toledo. One of Toledo's food specialties is mazapan, not to be confused with its cousin, marzipan, that foul Play-Doh-esque stuff that you find on cakes in much of Western Europe. Horrible stuff, but actually not too distant in provenance from this glorious thing, which you can find, like I said, here in, in Toledo. The difference really is it's still almond, it's still all Middle Eastern of, of origin, but it's the preparation that's so different. In Germany, Actually, much of Northern Europe, it's usually done in a bain-marie. Uh, in Italy, it's sun-dried. Uh, here, it's baked, so you can see the effects of the, of, the, of the baking process here. It's very famous in Toledo. Another difference is often in, in German marzipan, marzipan or Northern European marzipan, the almond flour or almond mixture is a combination of bitter and sweet almonds. Uh, here in Toledo, and actually much of Spain where it's considered a Christmas treat, although in Toledo it's available and enjoyed all year round, it's 100% sweet almonds. So it's a very, very different texture. It's a different flavor. You can find it all over the city in specialist shops, and you can find lots of different varieties of it, stuffed with things, made into different shapes, including like huge castles and life-size swords and things like Toledo is very famous for its sword. But it's delicious. It's absolutely delicious and well worth seeking out. Rather wonderfully, in the spirit of its three cultures nickname, historically, all three religious communities in Toledo ate marzipan. It's halal and kosher. Coming from the UK, Spain feels comparatively cheap, especially when it comes to food. Another thing you'll notice, I noticed immediately, is how affordable this city is, especially in the off-season, like now, March. 
you can get a decent breakfast, a really delicious pastry or some churros and a cup of coffee for under three euros. A glass of very good local Spanish wine, again, three euros, three euros, 50, couple of euros for a beer. And if you think I'm gonna do a rundown in a vlog, Because of its proximity to Madrid, just 30 minutes on a high-speed train or just under an hour by car, it makes the perfect spot for a day trip. Now that's a little bit of a double-edged sword. The obvious upside is it's close and it's easy and you can be in and out in a day. But the downside is that it is often overrun with tourists, especially in the high season. You can come out early in the morning, especially on a day like today, like a Sunday. The streets are quiet empty actually but then you wait an hour or so and the buses come in the streets start to overflow and that's okay that is what it is that's a lot of how this city makes its money but it does take a little bit of the character and charm away when you're having to jostle with everybody else to to really appreciate what this city has to offer what i did notice though is that when the sun sets and the buses have all gone again. The character of the city changes completely and there's a certain magical quality that descends on this entire beautiful city. So it's worth doing at least a night here, even if you're just staying in Madrid, because you'll see the tabernas come to life with just people who live here or maybe live in the surrounding villages. And that is really something to experience. So I urge you again, like take a day and a night here so you experience the full kind of cycle of Toledo. Toledo was a last minute trip, a shot in the dark really, and man am I glad that fate brought us here. It's amazing to me that such a place can exist just 30 minutes outside of Madrid, and I cannot wait to get back here just as soon as I can.